G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, it's a quiet day today. It's Australia Day, so we're trying not to uh, upset the neighbours. And I thought I'd just shoot a video today to show you something that I did touch on a while back. It's to do with bronze brazing, or brazing. Now, a while back I actually repaired a, a spring. It wasn't a coil spring. It was a ziggy zaggy spring. It was a bed spring like they have in the old army barrack beds, you know, those zigzag ones that go, and she snapped, broke clean in half. And I basically butted it together and uh, bronze brazed it together with manganese bronze, and it's still going good as gold many, many years later. So it just shows you how you can repair high tensile stuff, springy stuff, like springs, with bronze. Now, to try and join that that butt joint any other way would be just about impossible. I mean, I don't know how you'd go with TIG or MIG. You'd have to be pretty on the ball, but I think it would just probably eat it away. But bronze, yep, brazing will do it, no problem. So, okay, I'll cut this old spring in half and then we'll, we'll repair it the same as last time. Okay. I'll cut it in half, just use the friction disc. Now, to make it easier on myself, we'll join it this way. We'll just butt it together. And uh, that'll make it easier to align stuff, just like that. Okay, let's do it. drop it in some water to quench it and that will help loosen the the uh, the flux in the scale now that was spring steel remember high carbon now that was really not what you should be doing because that will make it brittle what's happened is the steel has snapped clean off. You can see it's actually broken away from the join. And that was because when I put that high carbon spring steel in the water, it basically made the steel extremely brittle. You should never ever quench high carbon steel when you do bronze brazing. If I now bronze that back together and let it air cool, you'll see that it will be a lot stronger. So I'll basically repeat the exercise, but this time I'll let it air cool, all right? Actually, I'll see if I can braise it together. Yeah, okay, we'll braise it together like it is, and that should do the same thing. Okay, now it's not a pretty well because it's just a demonstration, but we'll let that air cool and you'll see the difference. It shouldn't snap. Okay, it should be cool enough. Let's try and uh, break it. It will not break. That's the difference. Now, that's why you never ever quench 
high carbon steel when you're bronze brazing. It will be as brittle as a carrot. Now, if you do quench it, I mean, the only reason you would quench it, quench it if it's, uh, you know, high carbon steel would be to get rid of the flux residue. So if you do have to quench it, then immediately heat it red hot again and then let the air cool and it will come back to this, to this, to this state. But certainly do not ever, ever quench it and leave it like that. It will just snap. I've seen a situation where steel as thick as that has just, was actually in a, in a, in a uh, an air chisel and somebody thought, oh, they'll harden this high carbon steel after they'd machined it. And what happened was, the first time I used it, just the vibration from the hammer going back and forwards, the head just flew off and hit this guy in the chest. Luckily it didn't hurt him. But it, the, the metal, even though it was thick like that, it just literally snapped under its own weight from the vibration. So there you go, guys. There's a quick tip for you. Get your head a trouble. Look at that. That, that spring's as good as new. And... Uh, yeah, the power of bronze brazing. It's basically fantastic for this sort of work. You'd be battling to do it any other way. So repairing springs, throttle linkages, anything small, can't beat it. Okay, hope you found something interesting out of that. Just uh, be careful with the quenching. See you next time. Cheers.